from Nebraska, Mr. Fortenberry is recognized for five minutes. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Chairman and Madam Secretary. I also welcome you to the committee and thank you for your willingness to appear before us as our new Secretary of State. I did appreciate your opening remarks. I also appreciated the brief dialogue that we had after uh, President Obama's joint uh, speech to the joint session of Congress regarding the potential uh, development of nuclear weapons capability in Iran. As I said then, I s extend a hand of friendship. I stand ready to work with you in any creative way to uh, work towards some solution on that most pressing difficulty and the other int seemingly intractable issues throughout the Middle East. A number of us also met with uh, Ambassador Mitchell recently, and I appreciate the good work he's doing on your behalf on the Israeli-Palestinian question. However, Madam Secretary, my heart is also deeply conflicted. While I, I do appreciate your heartfelt remarks and observations overseas of women suffering from deplorable conditions, I, I am deeply grieved by your response to Congressman Smith's question. Your remarks last, last month when you called Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, a person whom you enormously remire, admire, were stunning to me. Uh, Margaret Sanger clearly embraced bigotry and racism. She advocated for the elimination of the disabled, the downtrodden, and the black child. In one of her writings, she said, today, eugenics is suggested by the most diverse minds as the most adequate and thorough avenue to the solution of racial, political, and social problems. I don't believe these ideologies have a place in our pluralistic society. And you went on to say that you will use American foreign policy in your position to further reproductive rights, which includes abortion across the globe. Madam Secretary, I don't believe we should use American foreign policy to export abortion. This will undermine, in my view, our foreign relations in many areas throughout the world, including Latin America and Africa, and among Muslim peoples. Promoting the international abortion industry is an imposition of our own woundedness upon others. Abortion has caused tremendous grief in this society and its export, I believe, will be seen as a form of neocolonialism that is paternalistic and elitist and an assault on the dignity, especially the poor and vulnerable. I believe women deserve better. Women throughout the world deserve better. Madam Secretary, I, I just urge you to consider another way, one that upholds the genius of womanhood and the life nestled within her. And no matter how difficult the circumstances, I just believe we should be big enough and bold enough to celebrate the beautiful gift of life. Then we will truly make a change in the world for the greater good. And I'm convinced that we would create an extraordinary amount of goodwill with this perspective versus forcing U.S. taxpayers to fund abortion overseas. Finally, I ask that you turn to a, a true heroine of international development and full human empowerment, Mother Teresa, who I believe you had a chance to meet with. She fought abortion by adoption, by care of the mother, and adoption for her baby. And she also said, come, we will take care of you. We will get a home for your child to those in need. She added that any country that accepts abortion is not teaching its people to love, but to use violence to get what they want. This is why the greatest destroyer of love and peace is abortion. And again, Madam Secretary, I urge you to please consider a kinder way forward, one that truly cares for the woman and her child and does not consider abortion as an integral component of U.S. diplomatic and international development initiatives. I live with six women. Well, let me clarify that. I have a wife. <laughs> I have a wife and five daughters. And part of trying to raise them well and empower them to be successful, I believe, is enculturating them with the noble ideal that all persons have inherent dignity and therefore rights. So I have to ask you, is forcing U.S. taxpayers to fund abortion in keeping with the highest values of the United States of America? Well, Congressman, let me say with respect to uh, your comments about Margaret Sanger, you know, I admire Thomas Jefferson. I admire his words and his leadership, and I deplore his unrepentant slaveholding. I admire Margaret Sanger being a pioneer in trying to empower women to have some control over their bodies, and I deplore statements that you have referenced. That is the way we often are when we look at flawed human beings. There are things that we admire and things we deplore. 
we have for eight years followed the policy that you have described. And I think we've gone backwards. We've gone backwards in the real, genuine care that we have given to women. I admire you for raising five strong daughters who will be able to make their own choice and most likely, given your guidance, will be very staunchly pro-life. But that is a choice that they will be able to exercise as free, independent American women. That's what I want for all women. Time of the gentleman has expired. Uh, the gentlelady from California.